Don't roll up your sleeves. What? Don't. That's so cringe. Uh, it's... Uh, I'm asleep. <laughs> Don't. Roll them down. I'm a sleeper bill. Put them down. I'm a sleeper bill. Stop. I've been staying asleep. I'm going to bully you in the comments if you do it. I'm going to make thousands of fake accounts. More engagement. Bud, sit. Are we rolling? Yeah. Uh, take it away. I'm a sleeper build. <laughs> Once upon a time, in the wild, wild west, there existed four degenerates. And yet, these four very irresponsible individuals came together with one noble goal. Get rid of the Sunday scaries. There was the good, the bad, the even worse, and the producer. And together they formed the Sunday Sessions Podcast. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Sunday Sessions Podcast. The podcast where we help you on your Sundays, because let's be honest, you've probably made some shit house decisions over the weekend. Uh, and so have we. So we're going to help you cure your anxiety and maybe we'll cure ours as well because, you know what they say, a problem shared is problem shared. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm one of your hosts, your co-host of this podcast, Dowlo. I make shit vids, been doing it for a while now. Uh, approximately 300, I mean, not 300, way more than that. But you get the point. I also have another co-host with me today and he's one of my shit mates and... Yeah. That's right. My name's Ben, a longtime friend of Liam's, and I'm just leeching off his recent social media success. So come along for the ride. I butchered that intro, but there is a reason for it. Tell me. I'm sober. Yeah. Been sober. How long for? 28 days today. I'm not keeping track, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, I've been sober. Uh, doing, doing dry July. Yeah. As have I. And, uh, it's going well, I feel like. If you like. weren't doing it, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, there's no fucking way. Because... It makes it easier. Because me and Liam live together. Liam and I live together. So, I feel like if if one of us wasn't doing it, it would be our mission to... Side note, sorry to cut you off. This just made me think of it. And I have ADHD. You, you know, like every time you say me and Ben or like me and Zach or whatever, do you always get that little voice in your head that's your yeah. parents' voice saying... Ben and I. No, no, no. It's not your parents. It's that one fucker from like grade three that was like way smarter than everyone. They're like, mm. actually, it's fucking Mary and I. They would say the same kid when you'd say, um, like you'd insult them and you'd be like, you're a fuckwit. And they're like, I know you are, but what am I? Yeah. And they're definitely like um, head of houses as, as, as teachers now. <laughs> and they take their job real serious. So shout out to you if you said, I know you are, but what am I? Fuck off. Anyway, as we were saying, I would not be sober if Ben wasn't because Ben is like, and this is an analogy I've given before. I'm not sure if it's on the podcast, but I've, I compare Ben to, you know, in, um, I'm pretty sure it's in the Emperor's New Groove where there's the demon, oh, like yeah. the devil and the angel. And I think it's with Kronk maybe. Yeah. Is it Zach? Can we get a fact in check? The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Kronk yeah. and they're, they're on the, the shoulders. Except Ben is the devil and he's also the devil on the other side. He's the devil on both sides. I'm not sides. that bad. He is. Even my mum's like, oh, Liam, I think Ben sometimes uh, encourages you to drink a bit too much. Yeah, well, you so. know what my parents say? The exact same <laughs> thing about you. Oh, no, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, I Tell me they don't. It is very lucky that we've both decided to do it because mm. we'd be set on trying to pull, pull the other person down mm. if uh, one of us was only doing attempting dry July. But... It is good because, like, uh, the benefits of not drinking clearly are there. Your skin's looking nice. Yeah, my skin, skin's cleared up a bit. You know, you wake up, you're not hungover. You don't have that anxiety. Mm. You're not spending money. You you have more energy, I feel like. But Get more done. I would throw that oh, yeah. all to the fucking bins mm. for that first sip of a Carlton pint on, like, a Saturday afternoon in the sun. Mm. It, all that good... The hell stuff means nothing. Nice, as wet. soon as you've t- even today with the weather. oh yeah oh yeah I can- we drove on the way here we stepped out of the house sun sun rays just hit your face and my first I think all of our first thoughts was let's have a Get fucking a beer. beer yeah I think um I've been in my head having a visual whiteboard of like pros and cons and the pros obviously pretty extensive list you've got. Get more done. Save money. I'm looking good, feeling good. I don't have the shakes. Uh, I don't have just 
liver problems. You know, all the bad things that come with drinking. Hangovers, constant headaches, feeling shit about myself, crippling depression. But then in my head on the whiteboard, on the, on the, on the pros side, I mean the cons side, I have no wet, juicy pints. And, and it's been a constant battle. And so much so that I'm at the point now where it's, it would take me like someone on the street walking past and going, fuck, you should have a beer for me to just fucking throw it away. I don't even care if I was one day off. I'm 28 days in today. And I would throw it away if someone walked past me on the walk to the car from this podcast and said, have a beer. The, f- the first couple of weeks, like the first weekend, it was like, yeah, this is, this is good. Oh, is like it? I'm feeling, I'm feeling, yeah. I can get through this. But now we've just hit over halfway. Fuck, I want a beer. This is like the graph of, of, uh, of, the, of the, what I'm going through. It's like everyone who has done this prior to me is like, oh, when you, the further into it you get, the less you miss it and you, you forget what it's like and or you, it gets easier. It doesn't. So it, it doesn't. It's more like the more days that I go without a beer, the more this fire is getting coal sh- <laughs> like shoveled into it saying, give me a fucking beer, con. <laughs> I was at the footy the other day. I've been to two footy games in my life sober and they've both been in this last month. I went with Zach and Blake and I said, if Collingwood win by one point, goal, like if they win by one point against Adelaide, I'll get smashed drunk. And I meant that with everything in me. And we won by two points. Can't make that up. And See, that's I, the universe looking out for you. Yeah, oh God. But I fucking was just going to be like, oh, two points is the same thing. <laughs> I had Blake say to me, if... Um, if you guys, if you and Zach come out, I'll buy your first three pints each, and that was a real fucking test of character. That was God putting a a wet beer in front of my face and saying, "Just have it." You know what I noticed doing Dry July is that when you're out with your mates and you say, "Oh no, I'm not drinking," or "I'm doing Dry July," all of them are trying to get you to drink. They it's go, the oh, just, just have a beer. Just have one beer. We won't tell anyone. Or oh, tonight won't count. And they're all trying to get you to drink. Mm. And I'd, I don't know if that's just an Aussie thing or like, and I'm not, I don't think it's coming from a place of like trying to fucking um, like trying to get your mates to be a degenerate. I reckon it's just, everyone just always wants people to have a good time. Mm. My mate's like that with crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't even go into that. Yeah. But no, nah, no, nah, that's, that's, for that's another a joke. Time. Anyway, I was at the fucking MCC because uh, my cousin Mark is an MCC member, which, side note, fucking overrated. It's a wank fest and it sucks. I'd rather be with the stragglers. <laughs> but when I'm in MCC, I do look at the poor people. When I am in MCC, I look at the people over the fence and I'm like, fucking poor cons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was in there, I was at the bar and everyone was drinking stupids and I was obviously drinking Coke No Sugars because this is another thing. M- MCG, start selling non-alcoholic beers. I think you can get them there. I couldn't get them in MCC. Yeah, maybe not. Couldn't in MCC. do it in there in the cult. Sorry for exposing it. Cult. And um, yeah, I was in there, and then my cousin Mark was like, "Can you hold this beer while I tie my shoe?" And I was holding the beer, and it was like the strongest two magnets in the world mm. was the beer to my mouth, and I was sweating, veins pulsating out of my arm, holding it down. I've got one arm that's way more jacked than the other arm and it's not from wanking. It's from fucking hot fighting off that beer. You know what I imagine that scenario would have looked like? You know when Frodo like holds the ring oh, yeah. and he's like, and the ring's talking to him and he mm. goes like all tunnel vision to the ring. Mm. You would have just been standing in, in the middle of the MCC, like packed crowd and then everyone else like disappears oh, from yeah, the room. Oh yeah, they did. And it's just a <laughs> battle between you and that beer and you're like talking to yourself and then Mark looks I was like, Liam, you're all right. You're all sweaty and fucking like <laughs> I looking was, like, at the beer. Fucking had claw marks through my shirt and I was just staring at it and he's like, can I have my beer back? And he had to pry it out of my hand. <laughs> so that's how dry July is going. And if I'm honest, I'm counting down the seconds until August 1st so I can get shit cocked. I've even planned what my first beer is going to be. Ben, can you tell them what my first beer is going to be? It's going to be a creamy fucking pint of Guinness. But see, that's the other thing. Now I'm craving a Guinness. I don't even fucking like Guinness. You know what my mum said to me? I'm just craving a Guinness because that's how much my body's fucking screaming at me saying, give me my medicine. I haven't gone 28 <laughs> days sober since I started drinking when I was 12. <laughs> it's fucked. You know what my mum said to me the other day when I saw her? She's like, oh. How's so Liam? You- no. Oh. <laughs> She's like, oh, so like now that you're reaping all of these health benefits from not drinking, like, 
why don't you just like keep not drinking? You should just do it this like every second month. And I was like, mum, you don't fucking <laughs> understand how badly I want a beer. Oh. Doing this every second month would like, it would be great for you, but fuck that. Not while you're 22. You need to live your life. I've never, I, in, every morning I'm waking up and watching the Burt Kreischer fucking, <laughs> About, the, yeah. I'll never stop drinking. Yeah. I'm watching that crying, just dripping in sweat. He, that's and a guy that's got it figured to figure out. To make matters worse is producer Zach, who also lives with us, He's not doing this, and he has a fresh sack, golden, I mean, silver golden sack of goon sitting in the house on the kitchen table. And every time I go to do anything in the kitchen, I see it glisten, and it, it glistens and catches my eye. And I look at it, and it's, it, it, it like creates a mouth and eyes, and it's just yeah. like, come and fuck me, it's, Liam. It's like it's a little, there. oh, wait, what you it's like a little mouse trap that he's trying yeah. to lay for us. No, it's actually there because it's like a wall of fortitude. It's something to mentally challenge both of you and put mm. you to the test. It's like a David Goggin situation, but with drinking. The other night, I was sleeping and I was just having an elite dream. And then I like felt myself um, sleepwalking out into the kitchen. <laughs> But it was, I was awake, but I wasn't controlling my body. Mm. And I was like, where, where am I going? What am I doing? And I ran into the kitchen table. I was like, ah, ah. And I was just clawing <laughs> over to the kitchen Is table. Is that what the claw marks were? Yeah. Uh. And I looked up and the gold, uh, the silver pillow was there glistening in the moonlight. Oh, it does that. And then luckily you walked out to go to the toilet and you went, Ben, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, I know you're in there. Stay strong. And I and you shook me awake and I was so close. No, to that ha- shows how much of a trance you're in because that was Zach coming to save you because I had to get Zach yeah. to... Every night, he has to put two two by four wood planks and nail them, my door shut with him because <laughs> I was going out there with like an evil look in my eye and I was like super hairy and like way taller and had claws. And I'd turn, I'd turn into this monster that was just fucking <laughs> do anything in my past to get to the goon sack and it, it's nothing that i can do to control that it's just when the sun goes down and the the moonlight hits that sack it's like i turn into a different beast so uh, i was gonna say ben it was me but you weren't sleep walking you were sleep floating you were like a cartoon <laughs> character with like a hot pie yeah. and it smells like wafting you forward oh that's fucking when they play these back on it like all a, I've been on thinking our about AA is, meetings is just like all I've so been where did it go wrong? Now, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm at the point now where if I went to an AA meeting and there was a bunch of people in there who hadn't drunk in thirty years, don't even remember what beer's like or don't even like it anymore, I'd fucking get up on the podium and talk to them about what it's like being twenty eight days sober and they'd all fucking go to the pub with me afterwards. <laughs> That's at the fucking point that I'm at. And anyone who says drinking isn't that good <laughs> Tell that to the shakes that I've got. All <laughs> 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 uh, right, I fucking, that's enough of that. Producer Zach now has a story for us to get our minds off beers because it's just like. I mean, yeah, so it, it could be worse. You, like, could be addicted to something else. Not saying you're addicted, but, you know, you could be. Oh, no, I'm addicted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. But, um,. A bunch of uh, people in Florida, apparently, they might have accidentally got addicted to something else. Mm. So this was an article I found and it says, Florida Japanese steakhouse shuts down after customers test positive for meth after eating at restaurant. <laughs> that what? is so fucking good. <laughs> Do you reckon the cook is just like methed out? Yeah. Fucking is on like his 20 hour shift and he's just cooking like yeah. at a rate and the, the boss comes in and he goes... Jeez, you're doing well, yeah. Barry. Fucking, you've been here for 20 years. He goes, yeah, yeah, I just fucking love this shit. Nah. And he's just smoking meth and he's putting bits in everyone's meal. There's an actual, there's an actual reason for this. And I think it'll make a lot more sense to you guys and everyone listening at home when, when I explain to you what's happening and why this has happened. And honestly, I'm surprised that this doesn't happen more. Let me paint the picture for you. Right, here we go. Okay. We've got um, the head of supply chain at, the sushi restaurant in Florida. He's thinking, fuck, what don't we sell here? We sell beers, we sell sushi and other miscellaneous Japanese items. What don't we sell? And someone says, we don't sell dumplings. And he goes, no, who cares about dumplings? And then some guy in the back says, puts his hand up, we don't sell cocktails. And he goes, you come up here, promoted. We don't sell cocktails, so we need to start. And what do you need when you're selling cocktails? 
Ice. Ice. <laughs> you know, like frozen water, you shake up the cocktails. Yeah, 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 so yeah. he goes, fuck. Essential part. Where do we get ice? But it's a Japanese restaurant. He speaks not a lick of English. <laughs> so he Googles in Japanese where to buy ice. But he doesn't do it on Google. He accidentally does it on the dark net. <laughs> Common Fine. mistake. Ice deliveries 24-7 Florida. <laughs> he goes, ding, cocktails. We're going to be rich. Hey, mate. Well, in Japanese. Hello, do you sell ice? Can you deliver it to me? Boom. Truck rolls in the next morning. Door, The back door rolls up like... <laughs> and this guy opens up and he's like, you buying the ice? He gets out his Google Translate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He gives him a very small bag. Very small. Probably about a sandwich bag. And goes, here. The guy goes, a bit small. I thought ice normally comes in big boxes. He says, no, no, it's really strong. You wouldn't want any more than that. And he goes, ah, it must be strong. <laughs> How much for this? 70 grand. <laughs> Ooh, a lot more than I thought. But maybe this is just how they do things in America. I'm from Japan. I don't know. Hands over the money. Gets the ice. Goes up to the new chef, grabs him by the scruff of the hair and says, pump out heaps of cocktails. Here's the ice. You can try the ice, make sure it's all good. And he goes, okay. He fucks off. The guy gets into the ice. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> he forgets he's making cocktails and starts preparing the sushi. But he's just, he's got one hand in the ice, licking his fingers, rolling the sushi. That's where that's how that's it where happens. That's how it over. So you can now see the dilemma and how they, that it all makes sense if you really break it down in your head. That, that is, is one yeah. possibility. Or, <laughs> here we go. Oh, The business has been failing because of COVID. Mm. Every, every business is going under. They have a meeting with the higher ups. They go, how can we get more money? And they look at the business plan of the subway in Mansfield circa 2016 <laughs> mm. and also the Red Rooster in Albury Wodonga circa 2017. Mm. We get our customers hooked on meth by putting traces of it in their food mm. and then we sell meth to them out the back of the shop. That honestly, I, I don't know yeah. if you already create, knew about this. Create that, demand and then provide the supply. That, this, uh, uh, this is, leads me into a good story. You know how things ignite little story flames yeah. in your head? This is a fucking good story. I'll speed run it. Pretty much, I used to swim in this uh, for this club called Aubrey North Lavington Swim Club. A-N-L, anal. <laughs> Not even kidding. Yeah. And um, we used to swim at the Aubrey North Lavington pool. And there was this chick, going to remain nameless, who um, ran the pool, owned it. I don't know if she owned it. She ran it. She was like a manager. And we used to go in there, talk to her. She was a bit like terrifying and pretty mean. But like if you really got her on a good day, sometimes she was all right. Mm. And then she had this son who was a fucking legend. <laughs> like the sickest cunt. Just so nice. We all loved him. He'd like swim sometimes. He worked in the fish, in the tuck shop there if you ordered two potato cakes he'd give you four kind oh, of guy like real, real stand up fella real okay. fucking legend of the community parallel story to that there was this um fucking red rooster in lavington shithole lavganistan stabbington fucking hell on earth <laughs> and it was on this road and it was neck it was across from a kfc in amacas and no one ever went to that Red Rooster. Like, if you ever drove through the drive through which I probably did once or twice, it was weird. Like, there was, like, no one there. I don't know how they were staying in business. Well, I didn't know how they were staying in business. But then, big news spreads in Albury like wildfire because there's nothing else to fucking talk about besides fucking Cindy and Maddie's Year 7 relationship. So, the hot news story of the week, Lavington fucking Red Rooster gets shut down in, like... $2 million ice bust because they were taping fuck it. You'd ask for like a special order and they'd tape the meth under like the cups and then come to find out old mate's son who worked at the pool was like the fucking one of the heads oh, of the ring. Oh, what? what the fuck? <laughs> and then he fucking gets sent to jail oh, and that's, that's the town man. I grew up in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much the same as the Mansard subway. They'd fucking just... Meth everyone out. I don't know if it was meth or not, but they were <laughs> fucking... Cunt, small country towns just love selling gear out the back of fast food joints. I'm pretty sure Albury Wodonga was the highest meth-consuming country town in Australia like fucking couple of years. We got a couple of records like that. We're pretty good with <laughs> shit records. <laughs> we won... There was like 2020, I think it was. Albury was like number three shittest towns in Australia and 
Wodonga was number seven, and they're pretty much the same town. Isn't, so we're doing well. Didn't didn't you guys have like the turnaround of the century? Aren't you like fifth best country town now? Oh, well, that'd be a fucking lie because it's a shit dump. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, goes to make you think. If you're going to try math... <laughs> buy it from the Red yeah, Rooster in Auburn. Go to, go, 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 go to the Auburn North Lavington swimming pool and ask the employees there if they can get it for you. Or f- fly to Florida, mm. go to that Japanese sushi restaurant. Yeah. Which mm. one is it? Can we get it a name? Uh, Yo Sushi? Yo Sushi? Go Sushi. Uh, oh, actually, I've got it here. It's, it's called, called Meth Sushi. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit of a giveaway. <laughs> a fitting name. Yeah. You know what fucks me off? What's that? I'm sure you're about to tell me. A lot of things. But do you want to know what one specifically fucks me off? Gets me to a level of rage that only the parking and like me getting my car towed has ever gotten me prior. Yeah. FIFA. God, FIFA has the ability to ruin, ruin relationships. Oh. Ruin friendships. It's like a game you play... When you start off so innocently, like, oh, let's have a game of FIFA. Yeah. Hmm. It's always fun at the start. Yeah, it'll be fun. And then a few things don't go your way. A couple red cards. Yeah, a couple red cards, a couple missed goals. And if there was like an option to murder your friend in front of you or to win the game of FIFA, I reckon every single person would, would murder their friend. If you wanted to really risk a lot of lives... Like, if you wanted to put a lot of innocent people in danger, you'd develop a button, like a red button that you press with one hand that blows up a small country. <laughs> and you'd put, it, you'd put it in front of me and make me play Ben in FIFA. And it's a fucking oh, gamble I, if those people lose. I, this is why. I'm a pretty competitive person because I grew up doing individual sports and it makes you very competitive because you're like, fuck, if I lose this swimming race, it's because I suck, not because my team played shit. Like... Playing, I also played team sports growing up, but like if you lose a basketball or a footy game, you can be like, ah, it's everyone's fault. Whereas when you lose a swimming game, you're like, this is my fault. So it makes you a very competitive person. And then I went to a boarding school where everyone was fucking like in this one room. And it's like having 60 brothers in this one room and you, you play a game of FIFA and if someone scores a goal on you, everyone tackles you and gets on you and they fucking scream in your face. And it scarred me and it made me into a very aggressive person. And now I'm just this, this unleashed animal. I tell you what they should do instead of doing Beyond Scared Straight, they should just transport kids back in time and put it put them in our common room when we were in year eleven, year twelve, and let them play FIFA against like Rossi or someone, mm. and we're all in there and they're losing the whole game, and all we have to do because that shit, that type of bullying and like fucking that that room was so it toxic. tears you down oh, and rebuilds hell. you into someone else you know that black mirror episode where they um the chick like ha- she killed someone and she has to keep reliving the same day as like prison oh yeah. and she like has to keep going through the day where like everyone's hunting her and then she finds out that she like killed the chick and everyone bullies her and like it's a theme park and they go run through it the same day every day that's what they should do for hard criminals like if you if you're like the fucking Hitler of the 21st century and you're doing bad shit, you should fucking not be like sent to jail where you can just sit and write poems or whatever. You should fucking be put in a simulation like that. But it's just my our year 11, year 12, bored in common room playing FIFA and getting fucking wiped and everyone in there doing what they did to us. And you should relive that every day. You lose, every, you wake up, play a game, lose, go to bed, wake up and do that. That 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 would be hell. When you're on the other side of it though, like when you're not the one oh. playing, how fun was it? Oh. Just tearing strips off your mate. And then you walk out of the room, you're like just chatting it up and act like nothing ever happened. I think I get the most angry playing you in everything. Like yeah. basketball, FIFA. I swear whenever I play FIFA, if I was playing as Bayern Munich and you were playing as India, for some reason your team would be have the better stats and you'd run down all my players and like your tackles yeah it's because you're shit no it's not i feel sorry for our neighbors because we'll sit in our living room and we'll be playing fifa and liam will just be screaming i like do the old like grab a pillow and just start fucking punching it like i'll eat a pillow i'll be in my room with headphones on editing and then all of a sudden i'll just hear screaming (laughs) through my noise cancelling headphones yeah (laughs) well the house shaking and then i'm like i know i really know how to fuck him off as well is that when i score a goal or when i do something good i don't like get up and go oh fuck you you suck 
I just sit there and like oh, don't his, say anything and just like Ben's maybe do a little face, smile or something like his that. Smug face ignites this furnace in me. If I was at a funeral, my nan's if I was at my nan's wake and my whole family was there, extended, Ben was a guest and they had a little TV and a PS5 and they're like, go play a game of FIFA, get your mind off it. And Ben beat me and scored a goal and didn't have a reaction. If my mum looked over and said, <laughs> who's winning? I would get up <laughs> and fucking KO her in front of everyone. That's the level of anger I get to. And it's not even like I can control it. It's like, I, it's like I'm a passenger watching myself just turn into this beast. You know in Harry Potter when he turns into the fucking werewolf and he like yeah. doesn't know who he is? That's yeah. what happens. As soon as Ben scores a goal as fucking... Like the women's socceroos. Yeah. versus me I'll fucking just we have to be very nuts. selective about who we play FIFA in front of because let's just say like my family was just visiting our house for example and then everyone was sitting in the living room and like oh Liam we'll have a game of FIFA while we're waiting mm. we'd play a game of FIFA I'd win and then Liam would like come out of his rage and he would just be holding like two swords <laughs> and all of my family heads would just be chopped off he'd be like what happened like, what happened I'd be like you just killed my fucking family, oh, it, I couldn't. I couldn't play FIFA against you in front of a massive crowd of people because I'd lose all credibility. And some really, really questionable things get said during during mm. during the, the games. Uh, yeah. Well, this episode's just making me angry. <laughs> Go on another rant. No, I can't. I've done too many rants. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a pop, very popular segment that didn't happen last week and everyone was mad about it. And by everyone, I mean there was literally one comment <laughs> on the YouTube video. I'm not even exact one comment. Well, well that was two weeks ago. Well, two yeah. weeks ago, yeah. Oh, fucking, I don't know. I don't know how the world's working. Everything's fake. But pretty much, this is our favorite segment called Beer Review. Dowlow's beer review to be specific. And you're probably thinking, you're doing Dry July. It's a sip and it's work related, so it doesn't fucking count. Just like doing caps doesn't count. Um, <laughs> I don't do that, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, but this is a segment where I, Dowlow, get selected a beer from producer Zach and I drink it and give my thoughts and talk you through my experience drinking said beer. And typically, Zach will go on a pretty outrageous and wacky. Uh, excursion slash journey to go acquire said beer. So, Zach, what did you do this week? And tell us the story behind how you got said beer. Okay, yeah. So, this week's beer review is a cautionary tale. One that our listeners and watchers should listen closely to because it really tells you what not to do when you go and have a drink. So, this week, I didn't venture far to look for a drink, not like many of the other weeks. I actually just went to a local pub and thought, if I get smashed, then I'll probably end up at a random kick-ons from which I'll grab a drink out of the fridge and have my beer for this week's review. So that, I thought that was a pretty good plan. Solid. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, th that should work. Anyway, so I do that. I go to the pub, get smashed, whatever. That's the boring part. But And while I was at the pub, I met this lovely group of individuals hanging around that indoctrinated me into their group. And indoctrinated? Mm. Trying to impress us with mm. your fancy words. <laughs> yes, I'm better than you. Anyway... Um, as the night was reaching its conclusion, they oh, invited me. Just to say kick the ons. end of the night. <laughs> no. <laughs> Continue. Okay. Uh, so everything's going to plan. I'm going to a kick-ons. Everything's good. So we pull up in our Uber to the place. It is an absolute mansion, like big bastard. I'm talking a room with a big TV, a kitchen, a shed. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's not. It wasn't that big. It was just like a normal house. Mm. Whatever. We all sit down, and as you do at a kick-ons, we throw on the in-betweeners, like yeah, every kick-ons ever. We're all sitting around for a bit, watching and laughing, when all of a sudden I start to look around and notice stuff that I hadn't seen when I walked in. Firstly, guns, like Ooh. a fuckload of guns. And then I look further around the room. Kilos upon kilos of cocaine <laughs> <laughs> stacks, like mountains. Where were you? Oh, this was in Ringwood. <laughs> <laughs> Um, was this your house? <laughs> Maybe. Nah. So, it was Random's house. There was even a giant battle axe hanging on the fucking wall for mm. some reason. I don't know. But that doesn't make any sense. But I start to think, oh, fuck. What have I got myself into? I don't know like what's going on, where I am. So, I try to stay calm. And then I look at my new friends. And like I'd been pretty drunk, so I hadn't really noticed what they looked like yet. And somehow, I hadn't noticed that they all had like face hats, sleeve hats. They were a bunch of scary cunts, right? 
And I realized very quickly that I'm at a kick-ons with a bunch of cartel drug runner members. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, whatever. I keep on trying to stay cool because I'm like, these cunts will kill me if I make a slip up. So I'm just sitting there watching the in-betweeners, having a laugh. And then a fat dude walks in with a massive mustache. Holy shit. It's Pablo Escobar. <laughs> not only... In Ringwood. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Not only is he alive and hiding in Ringwood, but he's in this living room watching the in-betweeners with us, like ha- having a laugh at fucking Will's trials and tribulations. Mm. So then he notices me. He says something in Spanish. I have no idea what he's saying, but it's definitely not good. I've never been more scared in my life. Then somehow... He, it gets even worse. He starts yelling at me in Spanish and I still got fucking no idea what he's saying. And then someone slams on the door and you hear a, police open up! It's the fucking cops. They've come to raid this drug den Pigs. while I'm here for kick-ons. Mm. So I think, fuck, what do I do here? I jump up as everyone picks up guns and points at the door. Everyone's like picking up guns, getting ready to get in this big fucking shootout. And I rush to the window to jump out. But then I remember why I'm here. I need a beer for this week's beer review. (laughs) So (laughs) they start fucking shooting each other and I'm like running around the house, dodging bullets. I was taking out guys. I don't know if they were the cops or the cartel members. I was fighting my way through it to the fridge. Mm. Get to the fridge, open it up, grab a drink. I have no idea what it is. I just grab a drink, smash through the kitchen window, escape the violence, get out, uh, got home this morning and... Took a quick nap and then now we came here and I've got a beer. That happened last night. Last night, yeah. Wow. Fucking hell. I thought you were in bed asleep after watching (laughs) Attack on Titan. Well, now we know why I left the light on. Yeah, that was me getting home. No, that was me getting home. Uh, I think I know what the beer is as well. Actually, no. No, there's no no chance because, yeah, no, this is just what they had in their fridge. (laughs) 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 I can see it through the paper bag. I never took Pablo Escobar for a fucking Bundy man. Right! <laughs> yeah, it's a yellow can with a polar bear on it. This is the worst drink in human history. <laughs> that explains a lot why he's such a violent guy, though. Yeah, if exactly. all he does is drink Bundy and but slam lines. I think he's actually dead now because, yeah, the, this oh, is, the cops this took is, him out. This is a out. true story from my family Christmas last year. My cousin Jamie, who looks like fucking Steve Irwin and wears like full cowboy outfits everywhere he goes. He was drinking Bundy's at Christmas. And I was like, why the fuck are you drinking Bundy's? And he said, oh, I'm just waiting to get onto the hard stuff later. This is a mid-strength. And I said, (laughs) cunt, they're not mid-strength. He's like, no, they are. I'm I'm used to drinking two standard drinks. That's the type of people, men, that drink Bundy's that don't actually get drunk. So it doesn't affect them. But normal, regular old Joes like Ben, myself and Zach and Pablo Escobar, you drink a fucking mouthful of Bundy, you black out... And you wake up in Judge Judy fucking's courtroom on TV. That's what these are. With 15 charges against you. If you said to me, drink 15 of these or never drink for the rest of your life, I'd drink them, but I wouldn't be fucking happy about it. I wouldn't like it. Let's see if it can crack and redeem it because these are fucking shit. I actually might use this time to talk about the fact that we had a bottle of Bundy that was bought as a birthday oh you guys had a bottle of Bundy at Denmark like your old house yeah. that you got as a birthday present the person didn't accept it like you got it as a birthday present as a piss and it just sat there on the shelf and every single time you wanted to fuck someone over you just it's like, still in Aubrey have a shot of this yeah no we only is got it two actually years, yeah. two years later two years later, still later in what the couldn't fuck? get through the bottle how did we not third drink of it that? left still how did we <laughs> not drink I remember we it's just pour it in random drinks yeah. and stuff and we'd have People over. <laughs> Wait, that's not a good thing to say, is it? <laughs> no, nah, I'm not having a sip of that. It tastes like dust. It tastes like Aldi, flat Aldi Coke, Diet Coke, and dust. Like dust. You know, not like a, the not, du- not like, oh, it tastes like that. Like, this is what it tastes like. It tastes like black licorice. If you chewed that and then went, oh, no. cracked open a fucking cola flavored drink from Aldi. Poured some of that in and then picked up some dirt from the side of the road and smooshed it around in your mouth. That's what this tastes like. It's the worst thing I've ever had and I'm ranking it a zero out of ten. I think Bundy wanted to sponsor the podcast. I'd rank it a zero out of ten anyway. <laughs> Their ginger beer are good. I don't know if they're made by the same people, but yeah, yeah, Bundy is. rum is fucking dreadful. And anyone who says it's somewhat good, I'll blow myself up in protest. It is the worst drink of all time. It's, I, it's undrinkable. I can't even have another sip because it leaves the worst taste in your mouth. And the fact that it's been still kicking since 1888 is fucking beyond me. 
and that's put me in a worse yeah, mood. Yeah, how have people like sued Bundy Bundaberg for like <laughs> drinking fucking ten cans of it and then, and then just trying to bash people? <laughs> Surely they're just like, well, it's I'm not normally a I, violent guy, but yeah. as soon as I get like it's a actually, sniff of Bundy into me, I just want to bash people. It's genuinely wild that a drink exists like this, where it's like. It's literally like known. fighting liquid. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's fighting juice. You have a drink of it, and it just makes you aggressive. Like I've only I've gotten drunk off Bundy, I reckon, once in my entire life, and that's the most aggressive I've ever been. Mm. On that, I've got a would you rather? <laughs> right. Oh, rating. What are you going to give the rating? Zero. Oh, <laughs> Bundy. I'd rather drink nothing. Oh, we're going to get a whiteboard by the way, for next week. Hopefully. Zach, do you want the rest of it? No. <laughs> Why'd you buy that knowing I'd have one tiny licorice sip? For the reaction that I got from you. We, we've sucks. had too many good reviews on this thing. Like zero, we, we haven't, zero. We haven't gotten anything below like a six. I think, Reach out so if I you want to sponsor the podcast, Bundaberg Rum. We'll bring it up to a two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'd have to pay a lot of money to get a two. I've got a would you rather, Benny. Um, tell me. I'm looking I, forward to it. Don't tell me what to do. All right, would you rather only be able to eat the same meal for the rest of your life cooked in different variations? Mm -hmm. So say you pick a chicken burger. You can get it cooked from fucking anywhere. You can go to Japan and get a chicken burger and it'll be different. Or you can cook it yourself. Is it like grilled or deep fried? It's a chicken burger. You can do whatever you want with it. But that's it. Chicken burger. It has to have the components of a chicken burger. You can get it cooked by Gordon Ramsay if you want. Yeah, right. But it's a chicken burger. That's all you've ever got. (laughs) Okay. Or you can eat anything that you want for the rest of your life, any foods. But oh, I, was gonna, I thought that was it. I was gonna be no, like, what? no, no. But the food is never cooked from you, nor any good chef. Wherever you go, it's always, always, always prepared by my year four teacher, Mrs. Peck. <laughs> and I have no idea if she's a good cook or not. So it's a real gamble. <laughs> So, so let's think about this. So do I have to eat a chicken burger breakfast, lunch, dinner? Well, you can pick whatever the thing is. Yeah, no, but like... for that option. Yeah. Chicken burger for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. I'd, it'd have to be the second option. But think about it. What if you like, you'd never be able to go to a fine dining restaurant because it's Mrs. Peck. It's probably going to suck. Wait, is she cooking at the restaurant? So, so yeah, say you go to a nice restaurant and all your friends get all these nice foods. Your Whatever you get is cooked in the back by Mrs. Peck. And like, so say you order like a fucking medium rare steak. If she's never cooked a steak, it's just going to be shit. I reckon I'd do that. And you can't give her tips either. You can't say, oh, add salt or like do it different. It's just whatever you get served I'm, up. So I'm not allowed to say, oh, that was shit or anything. Nah, you got to get what you give it. And you can't ever like, she's never going to improve. It's just, Why is it? Surely she gets better over time. Nah. She cooks shit and she, because she doesn't get a reaction. She doesn't know if it's shit. Does she have kids? Don't or know. did she have kids? But all I'm gonna say is it's a big gamble because, yeah. But you'd get you'd have a week of eating chicken burgers three times a day, and you'd be so sick of it. But no, but we'll say that the chicken burger can be cooked from. So you can summon Gordon Ramsay, you can summon a Japanese chef, or you can summon a Chinese chef, or whatever, and they'll cook it for you. So it'll be like a different chicken. I burger think. Every don't time. think about it like a. Think of a chicken burger. Think of like a pizza or a sandwich. Like how many different. Yeah, yeah, I know. Stuff. But it's still at the end of the day, if you're just eating. Bread, chicken, lettuce, chips. I'm assuming chips are included. But think, um, of, think about <laughs> how you're just eating bread, or chicken. Sandwiches, though. Yeah, I know. But like, like, if you eat sandwiches three times a day for like a month, you're gonna get fucking sick of sandwiches. Well, you're gonna get sick of fucking Mrs. Peck's cooking if you get. Yeah, but at least it'll be different variations. Like one morning, I might wake up like, oh, I want pancakes today, or I want wheat bix. Yeah, but imagine this. like they're burnt on the outside and like still wet in the middle. <laughs> yeah, you, order, well, you order a steak and she cooks it in the microwave. <laughs> no, we'll say, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll say you have to like talk to her and she gives it to you, but she's always so like sad and like it's good, right? And you always have to lie to <laughs> her and say it's good. <laughs> You'll get like you'll get asked for. Well, what if she's an elite cook? Yeah. Well, that's the risk you take. Yeah, I'm taking that risk. Fuck it. All right. We'll say that there's no chance she's an elite cook. At best, she's. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you just want me to choose the chicken burger? (laughs) Well, it's not necessarily a chicken burger. It could be fucking sushi. That's why I'm saying a sandwich. You can make every single type of sandwich. Mm. Like you can make. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah. All right. Sushi. It's a fucking. It's still bread and chicken and lettuce and all that. You could do sandwich. 
No, but I'm saying or pizza. It's not always a chicken burger Or pasta It's like you can It's any variation of one single oh, type of food Oh, I thought food. it was any dude, variation of chicken a, burger I reckon no. I'd probably do burrito Because you can have a breakfast yeah. burrito A regular burrito Or dinner burrito I'd or ice burrito. cream burrito Can you do a burrito bowl? No You have to still have the wrap Oh. <laughs> what, what if the, like you just un, like open up the wrap and just eat it out of the inside? Could you do that? Mm. Oh. Well, no, well, you can, but the wrap's still going to appear in your stomach. Okay, you still get the carbs. Yeah. Mm. What are you picking? I'm backing in my girl, Mrs. Peck. That, yeah, I'm thinking that would be good, but also I would want to eat from some of the best chefs in the world. So that would be kind of cool as well. Mm. Like if you just don't want to be like, oh, Gordon Ramsay. Think about if you chose a chicken burger and then you're on a yacht and like there's like fresh seafood and fruits and shit yeah. and you just have to have a chicken burger <laughs> about by Gordon Ramsay. You, do you choose a sandwich and you're like, wake up in the morning and you're like, oh no, you're just hung over as fuck and you're like, oh, I want a grilled cheese sandwich. You summon Gordon Ramsay to just make a grilled cheese sandwich mm. for you. It's like, yeah. fuck my life. And you're way more likely to get food poisoning more often from Mrs. Peck. <laughs> <laughs> what if she's yeah. a fucking Michelin star yeah, chef and we don't know? Nah, I'll, I reckon I'd back in. Mrs. Peck. Mrs. Peck. Yeah, I reckon as well. Shout out, Mrs. Peck. One, yeah. If she's got kids, she's got to be a half decent cook. Well, yeah. I, don't, I think... I think she has. I mean, wait, was she a primary school teacher? Yeah, she was like... Was she very old in primary school? She was school? like, yeah, she was probably... When I was in primary school, she was probably like 60s. Oh, yeah. She knows oh. how to cook. All she, old women know how to cook. Yeah, she's got to at least like knows how to make a really nice fucking like peach cobbler. Like some yeah. sort of or like, like porridge or something. You know what? She'd make a killer thing. Rhubarb, like the rhubarb yeah. slice. Yeah. Thing. And she'd have the rhubarb in their garden. Or passion fruit slice. Yeah. Uh, fucking if she could make a... I'd honestly choose the one dish cooked for the rest of your life if it was fucking... Uh, By Mrs. Peck. By Mrs. Peck. <laughs> <laughs> if it was cherry ripe slice, I'd just rock that every day for the rest of my life. If it was the one from fucking Aromas in Lavington, I'd get that every day. <laughs> yeah. I bet she'd. I bet Mrs. Peck would make a mean fairy bread. Oh, yeah. She'd fucking know how to she, butter that shit. She'd, she'd use like... She'd um, make a gangster She'd use... Bread. What's the Activia or whatever the... Yeah. What the fuck's no, that? like low pack, like the nice... Butter. <laughs> ben, I think we should do some top fives. <coughs> Righto. Talk to me. I'm going to go... Top five smells. Yeah. We've, we've, we've prepared this, so this is not just... We have five. gone home and done some homework for this episode and we've prepared some top five smells. So I'm going to run you through mine first. So this is the top five smells that any human can ever experience. Are you going first? I'm going to go first. Fresh <laughs> sheets. Coming in, I'd, I'd, I'd say that's top yeah, five smells. They're fucking good. Like when your mum washes your sheets and you come home and you go... <laughs> you know what's the best? Oh. When it's cold, when it's a cold winter's night and you get those flan- flannel sheets mm. and you just like run your hands on it. You're like, oh, mm. fuck yes. What's one of yours? Um, number five, you know the erasers, the rubbers that you used to put on your pencils in school and they had that nice oh, little yeah. scent and you just stick them up your nose yeah, and you go... Yeah, yeah, those were good. They were like... The green, and like, apple ones. You know yeah. what I was thinking about? This came to me last night at 12 o'clock midnight when I was writing this shit. That the tobacco industry created those scented flavoured erasers and... So think about like this. Normal rubbers, normal erasers that aren't scented are like cigarettes, right? And the scented flavoured erasers are like vapes. Mm. So they, they created those and then they got these kids hooked on these nice little flavours and then when they got old enough to buy vapes, they already had them on vapes. Is this a proven... <laughs> no, this is something you, I thought you, about you, when you I was You watched really... the Netflix documentary? On no, this the... is something I thought about when I was really tired. Yeah. So, I've got a good... I've got a, I've got a good smell. Okay. Petrol. Oh, that's my number two. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a smell that it's a love it or hate it. You smell petrol and you're like... No, oh, people that say oh. they hate it can go and get fucked. Yeah. Because it's elite. Should have been number one. For and me. when I had COVID, I was smelling it 24-7, so... Why? Uh, I don't know. It was one of the side effects. I'd smell toast and it'd smell like fucking jet fuel. No, Fuck that was yeah. the petrol I was fucking pouring all over you. Could have been that too. <laughs> Give me one. Number four, KFC. Mm. When you drive past KFC and your windows are down and you just get a nice big waft. I was waft saying that, that I feel like they definitely just have big fans that they blow out the oh, smell yeah. to, the, to the public so they go get drawn into KFC. I got another one. <clears throat> the inside of an Easter egg. What? Yeah, it's a weird oh, one. Oh, yeah. But you got to go bite one of the... You know when you get the 12-pack of trays of Easter eggs on 
Easter and you bite it and you smell the inside. If you haven't done it, go do that. That smell is top five for me. That's a weird one. Yeah, I know. I, I got my third one. I think everyone will agree with um, when you crack open a new can of tennis balls. Mm. And that's start. like the same energy as a new book or a new car. New book and new car. Yeah, but new those tennis, tennis balls. balls are just like yeah, and the sound of like yeah, yeah. Don't mind that. Um, I got another one. Freshly shampooed hair. Smelling someone else's freshly shampooed hair. <laughs> Specifically <laughs> on the train. <laughs> you're just sitting behind someone. You, you see someone, you're like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Specifically that guy wearing the red shirt and the jeans on the train at 5.15pm <laughs> last week. No, freshly shampooed hair. And <laughs> yeah. Agree with, we'll agree with I me. can get it. That's. I don't know about... Is that your number two? No, I don't have them in any particular order. Oh, I've got them in order. So you didn't. What's your number one? Number one, mum's cooking. When Not you come, Meg's. when you <laughs> when you come well, home, top five worst smells. <laughs> when you come home after a long day, fucking grade five, after proving that you're the quickest person in the school, when you're the top mm. dog of the social pecking order at St Mary's, and you walk in the door and you're like, oh, trudging through, and you just smell the aromas in the air, like mum's got like a slow cooker on, or she's cooking lasagna or something. It's like, mm. fuck yes. I've got another one, final one. Light wisp of someone else's cologne or perfume. When you're walking past someone and you get like a... And you're like, oh, they smell good. That's a good mm. smell. Like it could be a girl with like a really nice yeah. perfume or a boy that you're like, oh, that's a good... Shout out Chris at the gym. He's fucking cologne's good as. <laughs> <laughs> and his hair smells great wait, after wait. It. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, Liam, two of yours depend completely Other people. on what they do. Like... They need to be wearing nice perfume and yeah. cologne and they need to be wearing nice. Ah, uh, that's enough. I've got uh, another top five. <laughs> These are the top five weapons to use in a zombie apocalypse. Are you going first? I'll go first. Samurai sword. I think that almost is a crown number one. Yeah, that was going to be Because it doesn't run out of bullets. You can sharpen it with a rock or something and you, you're just slicing and dicing. Mm. Mm. I've, I've gone more like um, like you can just have like any resource ever is available to you uh, and i've also gone some like fictional items as well okay yeah so coming in at number five is a nuke <laughs> <laughs> because because it's highly effective but you can only drop like one or two of them yeah and like in, why and, stop it there do you have unlimited nukes yeah but just how many times can you move around before the nukes catch up to you no you just Go in one place and blow up nukes everywhere else. All right, except I've, for got, where you I've are. got one that's almost as effective as a nuke a whipper snipper. <laughs> <laughs> Is that actually in there? One, one of mine's a whipper snipper, but for those Americans or Brits or whatever, uh, 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 an edge trimmer, the thing that you hold out has the little things that goes. <laughs> you, know? you should do that, but instead of the little wires, you should make them samurai swords. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, they're just little wires. They break yeah, well, they fucking really hurt. easy. <laughs> they fucking hurt. Right, number four for me is a tank, but instead of the big <laughs> single shot cannon, I've got a machine gun there. So Why I can't you both? Because I because a single shot tank is just like not good enough. Mm. I I want to I want to mow the cunts down. Yeah. All right. I've got come coming to number three. A stick with nails in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a, how is how is that higher than a samurai sword? Oh, these are in a particular it's, order as well. I'm picking the order now that I'm reading them. Because like, you get a two-by-four barbed wire and hammer some nails halfway through it. That's yeah. fucking impaling Like Steve Harrington's zombies. weapon from Stranger Things. Yeah, you can do it with a bat as well. That's good because it's like you, you're getting real close and personal with the zombies. And that's what, I want, that's what I'm going for. The whippersnip. Like, I want it to be feel like I'm there. I don't want to yeah. fucking drop a nuke from another side of the world and be like, oh, I bet you I killed a bunch of them. I didn't see it. I didn't fucking whip a sniff of their heads off. You didn't off. get the blood on your yeah. hands. Yeah, the, the, I want the blood on my hands of those zombies. The stick with nails is like satisfying as well because you hit them and then you got to pull it yeah, out. Yeah, I have to put so my you foot have on like them and go... There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but in close combat, if there's like 10 of them on you, that's, you probably want a sword. Or a fucking tank, Or my number one. My number one's good. But number three for me is um, Captain America's Shield. Mm, okay. Just OP. Nothing's breaking it, and all, when I say that, you also have the ability to throw it, and yeah. it comes back to you. Yeah, but they, that that does, that doesn't that just doinks them. It doesn't fucking. No, take that's that chopping heads off, mate. Are you kidding me? All right, well, it's like the strongest fucking metal 
ever. Now that we're getting into our top top twos, double barrel shotgun. Because that blows heads clean off. <laughs> you want to know what I wrote that, my number that, two? I want a double barrel one that's like... Sink. Yeah, but you've you've sawed off the front of it, so it's yeah. And I want two of them, and I spin them yeah. around to like you know the uh, things. I spin yeah. them. My number two was the gold pump shotgun from Fortnite. <laughs> 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 so exactly the same as yeah. yours. All right. Well, my number one, <clears throat> a javelin from an athletics car. <laughs> 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 just for those long kills. No, well, just because you can like fucking stick it, and it's like not too, like it's plastic, so it's not gonna fucking get your splinters. So it's like protective. Just stab, pull out, stab. You, um, you're getting some kills with that. I have a question. And you can also throw it. How yeah. many? How many zombies do you reckon you can get skewered on there at once? <laughs> Three. You don't reckon more? Two if they're chunguses. I, I was thinking like six. Oh, how big is a javelin? Like. Job. If you just like if they if they're in Six a line inches. and you just run at them, <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. You can get some. Fun yeah, but kills. I feel like if you stab them through the gut, they're still like trying to bite you mm. while they're stuck on there. Yeah, th- they'll just push through it. My number one, and I think you'll agree with this, is a lightsaber. Oh, okay, yeah. That is that would be just the most OP weapon because yeah. it's never running out. Yeah, it's like instant kill. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna add an honorable mention. A nail Wolverine gun. Wolverine claws. <laughs> oh, true. Because that is giving you some real fucking feel. Yeah, <laughs> up and close. <laughs> if you had Wolverine claws in the zombie apocalypse, fuck, you'd have some stories to tell mm. at a bar. I'd love to just have Wolverine claws anyway. Just... <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound you, go, you go to that the tow truck driver after you collected it, and you're like, hey, mate, just here to collect my car. And he's like, oh, can you... You're saying to him, can you just speak closer, like through the mirror? You're like, oh, I can't hear. And he like leans in through the glass and then you just... <laughs> yeah, I'd love to just have my fist in, in someone's thing and just go... Shink, shink. Have, you, have you seen Logan? Uh, no. Nah. Nah, I've got... Something just came to me and I think this is also an honourable mention. A slab of Bundy. Because <laughs> you, you polish that <laughs> yeah, off. That's true. almost the same yeah. OPness as a new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, if you have any top fives that you want us to do... Send us into the Sunsesh Pod, S U N S E H Pod Instagram account, uh, the top fives you want us to do, and we'll do our top fives and read them because uh, we love to copy Fairbairn Films' as podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't agree with our top fives, then then I'll fucking we drop don't a care. nuke on your house. So this is this is normally the point of the podcast where we'll be doing our rave review, much love segment from fans from ourselves as well. But seeing as we are doing Dry July and we're, we're being boring, we don't want to give you guys a shit... Wet noodle. A shit wet noodle. <laughs> we don't want to piss in we your We want to give you a hard cock. <laughs> 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 no, we're thinking qu- quality over quantity. So mm. we don't want to just bore you guys with some fucking... Because we're not really doing anything. We're just we're really living in the matrix at the moment. So yeah. come, come uh, August, we will have... August something, 1st is a very special about. day for two reasons. One, it's the end of dry July and it's a Tuesday, which means we record a podcast on the Wednesday. So, well, cat's out of the bag with that one. It's, we don't record it on Sunday and release it on the same day. Sorry. We record on a Wednesday. So we're going to get shit cocked on the Tuesday and then we're going to have plenty of uh, tell about our first wet, juicy pint going down the slither. Uh, so that's a good update. And also, August 1st is the day that we announce the winner of our giveaway. We're giving away my Xbox Series X, which for those who don't know what that is, it's the PS5 equivalent of Xbox. And they're valued at like 750 bucks. So go win it. If you don't want one, then fucking sell it and buy drugs. <laughs> don't you've got, you've got don't buy drugs. Left. YouTube will demonetize it. If you don't want it, go sell it and buy yourself some new clogs. I don't know. Buy something. Buy something for fucking BTV or buy a Nintendo oh. Wii. Go to the Japanese restaurant in fucking Florida, Florida, and spend your seven hundred bucks there. But if you haven't entered that giveaway, gets drawn August first, which is in two days. Uh, no, three, two days. Liam, question: What yes? do you have to do to enter the giveaway? Oh, I'm glad you asked because it's very simple. All you have to do is be following me on Instagram, and then you have to follow the Sunsesh Pod Instagram account. And then you have to tag a friend in the post. That's it. Where can they find the post? My Instagram. How many beers will we have August 1st? 
I'm an, I honestly I'm gonna have my first Guinness and it's that's almost gonna be it. I know I know Zach's telling us to hurry up, but can you talk me through and the listeners through how you're gonna go about ordering your first beer come August first? I can because it's something that I fantasize about every single second of the day. August 1st I'm going to go to Set a the pub scene. Set the scene. I don't care if it's fucking thunderstorming I don't care if there's a tornado in Melbourne I don't care if it's beautiful sunny skies I'm doing the same thing I'm waltzing down to the pub kicking the front door off the fucking hinges looking at the bartender and just giving them a little eye eye like uh, narrow and they know exactly what I mean they pour me a Guinness I have to wait for it to settle but I'm not waiting for it to settle I'm fucking smoking it down the hatch. Like a, like a, you ever seen Nikocado Avocado eat noodles? Like that. Just. <laughs> and then once I have that, I'll be so fucking smashed that I'm going to black out and probably just end up going to bed. But it's going to be glorious and I can't wait for it. So, last time I did 25 days sober, I had three beers and I was pretty smashed. So, I'm pretty nervous to, as to how many beers I'll be able to have. Probably not many. Drink a bit of piss, do you? Legend. And that's all from us today. We'll see you next week. Make sure you favorite the pod. Uh, subscribe, like the video, go rate us five stars on Spotify, follow the Instagram. Send in video questions to the Instagram account and then if they're not fucking shit, we'll play them on here and we'll answer them. Questions you have about us, questions you have about the world. Send in trivia questions. It can be fucking anything. Send in some top fives you want us to do. Yeah, top fives, anything you want. But just don't make them shit because some of the stuff we get sent is like, there's no love and effort and energy. It's just like you guys are fucking filling out questions in your school PE assignment. Give us something. Yeah, they're like the questions you get at the end of a Telstra call when you go, do you have two minutes yeah. to fill out this survey? It's and like the-, the survey questions on YouTube when you have to just... I don't, I don't even answer it. I just wait the five yeah. seconds now. It's like that's the energy we're getting. So pick it up. Anyway, all that other stuff I said before about favoriting the podcast and all that shit. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! Let's just keep on going. Keep on pretending. I'll do it! Fuck you! Fuck you! I love you! Fuck you! Fuck you! I love you guys. We should start a podcast.